morning, everyone. I'm the talking tree over here. <laughs> we're thrilled that you've joined us for worship this morning. Um, the first one we're going to sing, uh, Jared asked if I, we'd do, and he said it's this old, old song. Uh, Moses sang it coming off the mountain. It's that old. And I said, we got some people that probably remember that, so we, we, should, we, should, be, <laughs> we should be no problem <laughs> for us. Barry, Barry, no, Barry knows it well, he said. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, but it got me thinking when he said it's an old, old song, I got to thinking that like the story of Christmas is a pretty old, old story, and, but it's worth retelling. So just like the story of Christmas is worth retelling, this song is worth re-singing. Um, some people, it may be the first time that they've heard it. And so even though the story may be very old, uh, it's very powerful and it's worth sharing again. So if you would stand up, we'll say a little blessing and uh, let's worship our God. God, we just ask that you just come and meet us here this morning. Uh, we thank you for the safety that you've provided to each, all the traveling and all of the, the bountiful meals that we've enjoyed with family, all the time to slow down. We're just so grateful for that. We pray that as the rest of the season continues, that we can continue to be thankful and see all the gifts that you put right in front of us and be thankful for those. I pray that you just bless this time of worship and uh, bless this day and let us uh, give you all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs> song. Every 
So 2020 has been a year for us to be in fear, has it not? Has anyone felt like they had some things that, that, uh, that made them a little more nervous than they should have this year? Am I the only one that's been? <laughs> okay. But uh, fear is, uh, we're not supposed to be a slave to. And in Galatians 4, I'm going to read Galatians 4, starting in verse 3. It says, so also when you were children, we were in slavery under the basic principles of the world. But when the time has, had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law to redeem those under law that we might receive the full rights of sons because you are sons. God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. Amen. And since you are a son, God has also made you an heir. And, and uh, this song is uh, no longer a slave. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. Sing this. I'm no longer. I'm 
This song we're going to sing is called God Turn It Around, and uh, this was on my heart this week because of what Jared spoke about last week. Uh, our God doesn't need to wait till a new year comes uh, to, get, to get things right. He has the power to do it right now, and uh, so there may be something you've been holding on to or so you've been praying for somebody to have a, a, a breakthrough or, or some, somebody to come through, and, uh, and you don't have to wait for 2021. It can happen today, it can happen tonight, it can happen at any moment. So that's what this song is about here. So I'm praying God come and turn this thing around. God turn it around. God turn it around. God turn it around. I'm calling on the name that changes everything. God turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around. All of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus. I'm praying God come and turn this thing around. God turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around. I'm calling on the name that changes everything. God turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around. Cause all of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. something he is up to something god is doing something 
right now. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something right now. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now. Cause all of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. I'm praying God come and turn this thing around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. I'm calling on the name. I'm calling on the name that changes everything. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Amen. Amen. How many of you have something in your life right now? Maybe in your home, in your family, in a business. If everything is going well for you, then you can just call out on behalf of the world <laughs> who needs God to turn this thing around. How many of you have something going on in your life, in your home, in your job, or in your business, whatever it might be, or maybe just, just in your relationship with God? This morning, you're like, God, I need you to turn this thing around. You know, you look across our community, you look across our world, you can see that there's things going on that we need to call on the name of the Lord because we need God to turn some things around. It seems like it seems like evil people are winning, doesn't it? It seems like evil people are, are, are advancing and moving forward with, with their agenda. But but I believe this morning that we as the church the church of Jesus Christ. We have the power through the blood of Christ to call on Jesus and he can turn this thing around. Amen. He can turn this thing around. He can turn around what's going on in your life. He can turn around what's going on in our community. He can turn around what's going on in our nation. If we will humble ourselves, repent, and seek his face, he will turn it around. I believe it with all my heart. I believe it with all my heart. And so right now, whatever you're facing, and if you're like, hey, my life's good, then just go to God on behalf of our nation and say, God, can you help us turn this thing around? We give it to you, God. Can you turn this thing around? But whatever it is in your life, come on, call out on him right now. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. Let's do this together. Father, we love you this morning. God, we praise you. God, we worship you. And God, you see, you see what's going on in our life. You see what's going on in our heart. You see what's going on in our body. You see what's going on in our families. You see what's going on in marriages across our community. You see what's going on in homes across our community, in homes across our nation. You see what's going on in, 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 in government establishments. You see what's going on in our world. And God, we as the family, as the body of Christ, we're calling on you, God. God, turn this thing around. God, do a miracle. God, show your power and show your mind one more time. And God, give your family God, victory in this day. God, and God, we believe you for God, it. We decree it and declare it in this place. And God, we thank you for what you're doing in our midst. And God, we ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Come on, if you believe that, put your hands together this morning. I mean, you know, God's the God of turnaround. He can turn around anything in your life just like that. Before you get home, you might get a phone call and say, hey, all that you're worried about is taken care of. Amen. I got it. Amen? Amen. Hey, welcome to Elm Grove. Welcome to the last Sunday of 2020. We're burying this thing this morning. Amen? And we're going into 2021 excited about what God is going to do in our community, in our church, in our own life, personally and individually, in our families. Uh, we're just excited about 20, 
2021. Amen. 2020. Yeah, I got that right. 2021. And so thank you for being here this morning on this last Sunday of 2020. You look across, we got new faces in the congregation this morning. I see Jonah back there on leave. He's here with us this morning, right? Yes, Jonah, we welcome you. Thanks for coming and being a part of us this morning. And so, uh, man, we got just so many new faces. So right now, why don't you turn around? You ain't got to get out of your seat. We don't want to do all that right now. Just turn around and wave and holler at someone. Tell them hi. Tell them you love them. You appreciate them. Thanks for being here this morning. God bless you guys. And when you're through, you may be seated. Give our worship team a round of applause this morning. Amen. Kids Church, nursery, you guys are dismissed at this time. We got a lot of kids this morning. Amen. Look at all the kids. This is cool. Awesome. Well, again, we want to welcome you this morning. Welcome to Elm Grove. Welcome to the country on this Sunday morning. It is the last Sunday of 2020. Uh, we talked about it last week, um, uh, about how we end will determine how we begin. We're not just going to just, just end this thing just to end this thing. We want to end 2020 on, on a good note and on a high note. Amen. And so thank you for being here with us this morning. Got a good-looking crowd. We want to welcome our online family at this moment as well. We have many who are traveling today. Uh, you're with family, uh, enjoying Christmas with family. We have many who just aren't feeling well today, and so you stayed home and chose to watch us online. And we want to say welcome. It's an honor to host you in this way, and it's an honor for you to host us in your home uh, through through the, uh, through the blessing of technology. So thank you, online family, for joining us this morning. Come on, Elm Grove family who's here in person, will you put your hands together? Let's welcome the online family at this time. <laughs> Amen. So it's an honor to have you with us today. And so thank you for joining us. For all of you who are here, thank you for coming on this weekend after Christmas, before the New Year's and spending this Sunday with us. Again, we're excited about this new year, but excited about what God wants to speak to our hearts and to our lives this morning. How many of you ready for some good news? Anybody ready for some good news? We're playing in the cheese it Bowl this week. That's good news. I love Cheez-Its. <laughs> I don't even know. What <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> And so we, uh, we're going to move on because I'm still bitter. And so I'm just going to move forward from that. But, uh, hey, it, it is a, an, an amazing week. Looking forward to a great week. Just a, a, but I just, I just want to start with some good news this morning. Pastor Barry, would you come up and would you share some good news with us? Yes, I will. <laughs> oh, after 40 days and 40 nights in the hospital, and then on Christmas Eve morning, I got to go get Barb and bring her home. Isn't that great? <laughs> uh, she's going to get tired of me. I, I just I find myself just sitting there staring at her <laughs> or just holding her hand and don't turn her loose. <laughs> uh, I'll tell her how many times I've kissed her since she's been home. <laughs> We've never been apart, and uh, uh, the devil meant a lot of evil for her and for me, and I'm going to tell you about it one of these days, uh, but uh, God is greater, and uh, I'm just a big crybaby, so I probably won't say very much, okay, because <laughs> I just get real emotional talking about all of it, but uh, well, it was just um, really special to get to bring her home on Christmas Eve. We... Uh, Barb came in contact with a lot of people that really blessed her and ministered to her while she was in the hospital, and some of them are here today, and they're just special people, and uh, touched her lives. And just to know that you guys were there watching over her, people that she knew, friendly faces, and praying for her, and, and just helping her through all that was a big help. You just don't know what that means to a family to know that. And uh, she's getting better. She... Uh, 
still needs your prayer. She uh, loses her breath pretty easy if she gets up, but that's getting better too. And, um, and she's getting her strength back because I'm cooking for her every day. She's getting some good, good home cooking. <laughs> A lot of grilled cheese sandwiches and grilled hamburgers. and <laughs> Oh, my. But um, anyway, she can't get out yet. And um, the doctor said she didn't need to be around any crowds. And anybody even that's got a cold would give her a cold. It would be a problem for her. So, uh, but she's getting better, I can tell, every day. And I know you guys have been praying for her. And it blessed me when last... Last week, I said she gets to come home in the middle of the week, and Barb was listening uh, from her hospital room, and all you just started applauding. <laughs> that blessed me. It really blessed Barbara, too. And uh, uh, anyway, I know you've been praying for her, and uh, uh, she's going to get back here as quick as she can. She sure hates missing. <laughs> she sure hated staying home while I left and came here this morning. So anyway, that's good news. I, a lot better than uh, the devil told me was coming my way. He's just a liar. Do you know that? He's a liar and the father of lies, and sometimes we just have to tell him to his face um, and call him what he is. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Don't ever forget that. Anyway, God bless you. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad for good news? There's a lot of good news across our congregation this morning. Many who are have battled this ugly virus, and we're still standing to tell about the victory of God. Amen? And many have battled sickness, and you're here, and many who are watching online, and you're, you're getting over this thing, and, and uh, um, man, it just, it's, it's good. It's good to be a part of the family of God. And so we're going to talk about that this morning. But before we go, just a, a couple of announcements for you. First of all, uh, remember that this we're still on Christmas break, and so where there'll be no powerhouse kids or Grove students for midweek study this Wednesday. Uh, we will start back a week from Wednesday, so excited about that. Um, uh, let's see, what else is there uh, next Sunday, as soon as our service is over, uh, we will be removing the Christmas decorations from uh, our walls and our facility and putting them back up for another year. And I'm just believing Jesus is going to come back for we have to put, put them back up. Amen. And so everyone who helped put them up, you would agree in prayer as well. And so, but we, we have a great time. We always have a great time uh, putting them up and taking them down. And for some reason, taking them down is a little bit quicker than putting them up. And so, but this next Sunday, we're going to be taking those down after service. And, and if you want to stay and help out with that, uh, we'll, we'll feed you. We may just get buried and make those grilled cheese for you. And so we're going to have a, a great time. And, and so I want to encourage you, if you can, to stay and help out with that. Um, uh, and, and, and again, um, we're just looking forward to a great 2021, looking forward to what God's going to do here in this place, and, and looking forward to getting everybody back, everybody back from the holidays and everybody back from sickness and getting everybody back in the house of God. So that's coming, that's coming soon. Amen? Amen. Hey, uh, also, if you would, if you would just take a, a moment and remember Carolyn and her family in your prayers, um, Carolyn's brother, Wild Bench, passed away last night, and so uh, um, if you will just remember them and, and her family in your prayers this morning as they proceed forward with all the funeral arrangements and all the things they have to do, and, and uh, uh, he was in the nursing home for, for a while, and Carolyn go down and see him and uh, take, what, what was it you take to him, boy, you, you take Diet Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, and and uh, she'd take some snacks and stuff to him. And, and so just, uh, uh, man, uh, uh, just, just remember them and their family in your prayers this week. Would, would you do that? In fact, let, let's just pray. Let's pray over them right now. Would you join me in prayer? Father, we just lift Jeff and the f- entire family before you today. God, as they just proceed with, with everything that's on their plate and everything that's running through their mind and, God, everything that's going through their heart, as they prepare over these next couple of days. Uh, God, we just, we're asking for your comfort to wrap around them. And God, for you to strengthen them and uphold them in this time. And God, we're asking that you would just, uh, Holy Spirit, you're known as our comforter. 
And so today and for the days to come, we need you to be exactly who you are. Wrap your arms of comfort around this family and just uh, give them exactly what they need in this season and this time. And God, we thank you for a life that we know uh, uh, had his faith and his trust in you. And so God, we, we mourn and we grieve, but we don't do it as the world does. We do it with hope and expectation of what is to come. And so, Father, may this family feel that great hope and that expectation even in the midst of sorrow. And so, God, we ask all these things today in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Hey, God bless you guys. Thank you for joining us in that prayer this morning. Um, also, just a reminder, it is the last Sunday of the month, and so if you're looking to make a contribution to the church through your tithe, through your giving, through your offering. Uh, as you leave today, the uh, offering receptacles are located on both sides of the media center as you exit our sanctuary, and you can just drop it there in the box. And uh, we appreciate your faithfulness. We appreciate your giving. This church is absolutely incredible in the way you continue to reach out and the way you continue, continue to uh, uh, fund what God's doing and fund the kingdom. And he, I know he's going to bless you for it. I know he is blessing you for it. And I know he'll continue to bless you for it. His word is true. Amen. And so uh, thank you so much for, for giving and, and uh, honoring God and worshiping God uh, through your tithe and through your offerings. Uh, we appreciate that. And, but more than that, I know God, God will bless you for that. So thank you so much for that. And, and uh, uh, it is the last Sunday, and so anything that goes today will be on the 2020 uh, uh, slips as you get those here in a few weeks. And so just a reminder for all that. So just drop those in the receptacle as you leave. And if you're like, I, I, didn't, I didn't bring anything today, that's okay. Find a neighbor that's got a checkbook and just be led by the Lord. Amen? Amen. So, or ask them to borrow their credit card and hop on the line before you leave service today. It's, uh, it's all good, all good. Today, as we wrap up 2020, I want to talk about something that this church is phenomenal at. You're, you're, you're fantastic at this. And I address this issue not because we have any issues. <laughs> I address this because, not because we have any problems. I address this because uh, you guys operate in this um, with excellence. And I just want to continue to encourage us to operate in this with excellence. I want to encourage us to continue to walk in this in which we're about to talk about. Again, there is no issues, there is no problems, there is no what, who's he preaching to, who's he talking about. I bet I know, I bet it's him. No, no, there's nothing like that. I want to encourage us as we continue. Over the last 40 years in leadership in this church, you guys have had incredible leadership through Pastor Orville and Sherry. And they have taught this, they have exemplified this, they have walked this. Um, it has been just an incredible testimony to the leadership that they have brought to this church, not only to this church, but to this community. And this is the word that I just want to hone in on today, and it's the word unity. Unity. I want, to look at, I want you to look at your neighbor and say unity. Cover your mouth if you need to. Form your own ma mask with your hand and say unity and then shake their hand. And just, no. Unity. Um, in, in Peanuts, how, how many of you have ever... Uh, saw a, a Peanuts cartoon or a Peanuts comic strip with Charlie Brown and Snoopy. I used to watch these and look at these all the time. And, but in a Peanuts cartoon, Lucy demanded that Linus change TV channels, threatening him with her fist if he didn't. And he said, what makes you think you can walk right in here and take over, said Linus. And Lucy replies, these five fingers. Individually, they're nothing. But when I curl them together into a single unit, they form a weapon that is terrible to behold. And Linus responded, which channel do you want to watch? <laughs> and turning away, he looks at his fingers and he says, why can't you guys get organized like that? <laughs> There's an old African proverb that says, the man who tries to walk two roads splits his pants. Think about it. I'll give you time. Likewise, we could say the church that tries to walk two roads will split her pants as well. We'll split. 
And so this morning, I want to connect us with Psalm 113, excuse me, Psalm 133, Psalm 133, and Psalm 133 verse 1 says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for people to dwell together. One version says for people to dwell together in unity. Do you know you can dwell and not be together? I'll try this side. Do you know you can dwell and not be together? You know you can dwell and not be in family, in marriage, in church, on your job. God wants us to dwell together in unity. In fact, the last prayer that Jesus prayed in John 17, he prayed it five times. He said it five times in the same chapter, the same prayer request. He said, make them one. Make them one. Make them one. He said it five times because unity is a big deal to God. It's a big deal to him. If the devil can divide us, he can conquer us. If the devil can divide a marriage, he can conquer the marriage. If the devil can divide a household, he can, he can conquer the household. And if the devil can divide the church, he can conquer the church. Unity is a big deal to God. Look at your neighbor, cover your mouth and say it's a big deal. It's a big deal. And then in verse 2 of chapter 133 of the book of Psalms, it talks about the precious oil upon the head, running down the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down the edge of his garments. He's saying, what God is saying is the anointing, because that oil is representation of the anointing. The anointing is attracted to unity. The anointing is attracted to unity. He says something profound. He said, it descended upon the mountains of Zion, for the Lord commanded the blessing life forevermore. God said, I will command a blessing on my people who will unite together, who will be together, who will dwell together in unity. God will command a blessing upon the house, upon the marriage, upon the family, upon the home who is unified together. God command, how many need God to command a blessing on you? Woo, wouldn't that be good? No wonder the devil wants us fussing and fighting with each other. No wonder he was wanting to divide our homes, our families, and our lives. He's wanting to stop the blessing of God upon our life. He's wanting to stop it. Now, I want to talk this morning about the power of unity. When it ceases to be about me and my, and it becomes about we, there's a commanded blessing upon that house. When your marriage is more than me and my wants and me and my desires and me and my needs, but it becomes about we, there's a commanded blessing upon your marriage. When your life, when your business, when your home, when it's not about me and my, but it's about we, God says, I will take that and I will bless that. I will bless that. And he will transfer a blessing when we transfer and shift the focus off of me and my desires and me and my wants onto we. What's we? And I'm preaching this morning. I want to talk to you also from the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 11, verse 17. God told Moses in 11, verse 17, he says, hey, Moses. Now, this is the Jared Cloud version. This is not a one-man show, Moses. This is not a one-man show. I want to take the spirit that's on you, and I'm going to impart it upon the 70 elders around you because it's not about me and we. It's not about me and my. It's about we. Amen? I don't want my church to be built on one man. That's what God's saying. God's saying there's already one church that's built on one man, and that's the bride of Christ that's built on the man, Jesus Christ. That's what this is about. I want it to be about we're in this thing together. And guys, I can tell you, when we are in this thing together, and again, this is encouragement. I'm, I'm not saying we got issues or we got problems. I want to encourage us to continue to walk in this. Man, if you were here Sunday night, what an amazing event with Christmas in the country. We had to think outside the box this year with everything going on, everything happening around us. We thought outside the box, and I thought Sunday night was absolutely incredible. I was so honored to be a part of the Elm Grove family on Sunday night. I'm honored to be part of this church every night. But on Sunday night, there was just something special about that night. I know when we circled around and we prayed before we began serving that night, uh, Pastor Barry, he counted, and just in that circle, there were 30, uh, 35, is that what you said? 350, 350 people. <laughs> 
There was 35 people in that circle, and that wasn't everybody. We still had people outside and still people uh, just doing things to make those final touches that night. And, and you know, and, and when you put that many people together serving for, for one goal, um, it, it's amazing. It's amazing how the kitchen functions. It's amazing how people in the kitchen are serving and laughing and, and loving each other. And, and then you walk by and every five minutes you hear, you hear Michael break out in song. And when I hear Michael singing, I know all is right with the world in the kitchen, right? It's good. It's a good sound. It's, there's, just, there's something about it. And Michael starts singing just like, yes, <laughs> it's good. And so then everyone else joins. It's just a lot of fun. And then outside, everything that's going on outside, taking care of the vehicles as they come through, give them the gifts and giving them. And it was just a fun night, an encouraging night. It was a night that we worked together, we served together, and we dwelled together in unity. And I just want to say this. This isn't even in my notes, but this is something that I know from experience. A church that works together doesn't have time to be fighting together. Oh, come on, somebody. That's why we do so much. We're not giving us a chance to fight with one another. A church that works together doesn't have a chance to be fighting together. But a church that does nothing has a chance to get involved in every... Oh, I'm just moving on. <laughs> Woo, thank you, Holy Spirit. That was good. All right, we're moving on. Amen. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, that's good. That's good. But we are a force. When we unite together, we're a force that hell cannot stop, that hell cannot defeat, because it's not about me, it's not about I, it's about we. And the strategy of hell has never changed. Divide and conquer. Just break things up where it's all about me and mine and we forget about we. That's the strategy of hell. And there the blessing is withdrawn. The anointing is withdrawn because the power of unity is gone. That's why Jesus said five times in the last prayer meeting he ever had on this earth, Father, make them one. Make them one. We sung that song this morning. I asked Blake and Bethany if they would to lead us in that song, that very first song, that old, uh, that old uh, uh, chorus. Uh, I remember singing at Haleyville First Assembly of God when I was just a kid. I remember that. That was back in the 1940s. And I look good for 80, don't I? You thought I looked okay for 40. I look great for 80. But I remember singing that song. And I remember that line, so forget about yourself. Concentrate on him and worship him. So forget about yourself. Concentrate. I ain't going to sing it to you because I, I like people being in the sanctuary. But forget about yourself. Concentrate on, on him and worship him, Christ the Lord. And that's what, we've, that's what we got to continue to do. Forget about ourselves. Concentrate on him and worship him. You know, snowflakes, they're one of nature's most fragile things. But just look at what they can do when you put them all together. Well, that's good. I wish I'd have thought of that. I didn't, though. Tony Evans did. But snowflakes are one of nature's most fragile things. But look at what they can do when they just stick together. We, uh, we were pastoring in Sepulpa, and uh, I'll never forget this Sunday night. Um, it was altar time, and people had come down and, and was desiring prayer. And there was a, a couple in our church, and their name was Jack and Jacqueline. And Jack and Jacqueline had been through just a mess. They had been through just chaos in their life, and they'd, they'd really been done dirty up to this point. They had three, three wonderful girls who were in our youth ministry there. They come forward that night, and they, they were just all, both of them broken. And they both just wanted, wanted us to pray with them. And there was probably, you know, on a Sunday night, I'd say probably 75 to 100 people there on, on, during our Sunday night services and, and um, as we come forward we begin to, to pray with them and, and I'll never forget as we were praying they were just broken and both of them Jack, Jack was just a big old guy um, uh, Jack reminded me of what's, what's the guy's name off Monster Inc the big one Sully thank you 
Thank you. Jack just reminded we called him Sully because he just, he looked like Sully. He talked like Sully, just a big old, just cuddly guy. And so Jack was forward, and he was probably stood about six foot four, six foot six. He stood above the crowd during the altar time that night. And his wife, Jacqueline, and their three girls, and they come forward, and we just, we just begin to pray with them. And I'll never forget as we begin to pray, I opened my eyes. And when I opened my eyes, I saw a lady over here on, on his right, been my left, and she put something in his pocket. And I could tell she put money in his pocket. And I thought, well, praise God, that, that's that's fantastic that's awesome and then the next thing I know someone else like from the middle was passing money up and they were putting it in his pocket and and then then there was someone else's over here on the right side that walked kind of in front of me between me and Jack and Jacqueline and put money he had you know he's a big man so he had a big pocket and put money in his pocket his shirt pocket and this began this didn't happen two or three times like this started happening for for what I would say five, six, seven minutes as people would, were going back to their seats and grabbing money from their purses and grabbing money. Some even went back to their cars and got money out of their car, got a checkbook and, and was writing the check and put. And before long, like he had money flowing out of his pocket. Then they were just trying to give it to him. And I just remember the scene, him, he had his hands up. And how many know if that happened to you, you'd have your hands up in worship too. He had his hands up. Someone's like, yeah, can we have that kind of altar call this morning? He had his hands up in worship, and he had his hands up in worship. People were just sticking money in his hands, and he, you know, he was trying to worship, but he was holding on, and the money was just falling out of his hands. And I, I, just, I just remember that night. I remember that night because that night, that family who was in a great financial bind, that family walked out of there with over $3,000 in their hands and, and then a home that they could move into and live in for the next couple of years rent-free. I, remember, I just remember that night. I remember how the, the church came together on that night. And, and it just it stuck with me in my mind for all these years. And listen, we, we are that church. We're, we're, we are that church. We, we, we may not have altar calls, like, but whenever there's a need in this community or where there's a need in this church family, you guys continue to reach out and to give out of what God's blessed you with. And that's, that's, that's part of being the body of Christ. That's part of that unity that we uh, get to be involved in. How many remember the story in the Bible about Ananias and Sapphira? You remember that story? Isn't that an amazing story? Let me just, just kind of hit real quick. Ananias and Sapphira dropped dead in the New Testament church. Just dropped dead in Acts chapter 5. Now, here's the thing. Nobody was taking up an offering. Nobody was trying to, to, to pull money. Nobody was trying to, you know, nothing like that. There was just a move of God. Nobody got up and said, bring your offerings, bring your tithes. Come on, let's bring. Nobody said anything like that. But the Spirit of God started moving, and the people started bringing, and the people started giving. And the Bible says that they were selling things that they had and bringing and giving to expand the gospel. And the Bible says that Ananias and Sapphira, they didn't flow with what God was doing. And the, even though grace was a baby at that time, God said, I'm going to interrupt grace while it's still in its infant stage. I'm going to reach back into judgment, and there I'm going to take me two New Testament members who refuse to get involved in what I'm doing in the church. Aren't you glad you came to church this morning? <laughs> Woo! That's crazy. Isn't that something? You think participation doesn't matter. Oh, with God, participation matters. That's not the Old Testament. That's the New Testament. Church growth uh, uh, leaders and church growth, uh, people who study church growth, I guess you'd call them experts. I don't even know what an expert is anymore. We hear that term all the time. Uh, this is an expert on this, expert on that, and they come to find out, never mind. But experts, church growth experts, they say, and I've heard this before, there's the 80-20 rule. Now, I just want you to know, this, we started looking at this at our church. This does not apply to Elm Grove. This is absolute. our church blows this rule out of the water. But in a lot of churches, the 80-20 rule says that 20% of the people in the church participate. They participate in worship. They participate in serving. They participate in the vision. They participate in giving. Basically, 20% of the church, according to those who study church growth, 20% of the church participate. 
and just spectate. Now again, we started looking at Elm Grove. That is not the case here. Praise God. Look, here it's, it's reversed. It's like 80%. I don't even know if it's reversed. I mean, we may have higher than that. You, you, this church is absolutely incredible. But I just got to thinking, what if the church as a whole, across, our, across our, our nation, across our world, what if we could reverse that? And 80% participated and only 20% spectated. You come into an atmosphere where 8 out of 10 people are on fire for God and going after God with everything that they have. You know, uh, if you're looking at that, at the Last Supper, Jesus told his disciples, he said, one of you will betray me. And all of them looked at each other. Read your word. All of them looked at each other, and all of them said this. The Bible said they all said this. Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? And a lot of times when we come to church, I know I've been like this. We hear a sermon. We think it's for everyone around. Oh, preach it, preach it. Those people, they really need to hear that. You know, those people, I, I was listening to a conversation out in the foyer before church, and I, I know this is hitting home over here. Come on, preach it, preacher. You know, or I read their Facebook this week, and I know what they were saying on Facebook, and man, they really, I hope they're paying attention. I hope they're logging in. I hope they're listening. But maybe we need to walk into church, and when the word is preached, or when, when worship is taking place, and God's trying to speak to us, maybe we, instead of saying, man, that's good for them, maybe we need to say, take a cue from the disciples, the ones who actually wrote a lot of the New Testament and say, Lord, is it I? Lord, is it me? Are you trying to say something to me? Because in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, there were 120 of them up there in the upper room. And they were all with one accord. Look at it. In one place, with one accord. And what was before, uh, they re- and this was before that they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So how much more those of us who've been filled with the Holy Spirit ought to be in one accord and in one place together, praising and magnifying God together in unity. The Bible said this, there came a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind. It filled the place where they were sitting and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to pray in other tongues and the Spirit gave them utterance. And So what are you saying? What I'm saying is there's something about being in one accord. There's something about being in unity that God commands the blessing to flow to that people. When they got rid of division, when they got rid of me and mine, they became we. God began to flow. And the reason God can't bless a lot of times like he wants to bless is when we say me and my is more important than we. One of the biggest prayers we ought to pray is God unify us. Keep us in unity. The Bible said on the day of Pentecost, after they, filled the, uh, after they were in the upper room, the Holy Spirit filled them. And they said that they went into the streets And we always talk about Peter, Peter being the guy that preached the first sermon on the day of Pentecost, a sermon that birthed the church. But the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 14, that Peter's standing up there with the 11. He wasn't standing there by himself. He was preaching, but all 11, they weren't sitting. They were standing there with him. They were with him. They were there together. They were creating a place in one accord that God could command the blessing to come out of the temple onto the streets. Does that make sense? They understood the power of unity. They understood this is not a one-man show. It's not about me and my, it's about we. And listen, if we get raptured, it's not going to be about me and my. Listen to what the 1 Thessalonians 4.16 says. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel, the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Watch this. And we who are alive and remain shall be caught up. If you're going to get raptured, it's going to be a we rapture. There's others of us going with you. And if I don't, I'm grabbing hold of your foot tail before you, you know, I'm just kidding. There's other of us that we're, we're, we're going. This isn't a me, my thing. This is a we thing. We get to go experience Jesus together. Together. We, we will be caught up together with him. We, it's about the power of unity. When we come together in the name of Jesus and we begin to exalt him, strength is transferred from one to another. A great church is a we church. And for the past 40 years, this church has been about we. It's it's even been more than about we. It's been about them. What can we do to reach them? What can we do to reach out and touch the lost and bring the lost in? And I'm going to show you something right here in Acts chapter 19, verse 34. There's a, it, it, it talks about a guy by the name of Demetrius, okay? And Demetrius, he was an idol maker. And the Bible said that he made a whole lot of money from making idols until old crazy Paul came to town. 
And then when Apostle Paul came into town, he preached and he shut the idol business down. The idol business went belly up. And the people of the city, watch this in verse 34, all with one voice, listen to that, all these people were idol worshipers, and all with one voice they cried out for almost two hours to a false god, great is Diana of the Ephesians. Now Diana was the sex god. That's who she was. She was the sex god. And it was an idol that they worshipped. And they burned incense, and they believed that it would give them power, and they believed that if they worshipped Diana, that she would bless them, and she'd cause their nation to grow and to multiply, and for the people to grow. God was the, uh, Diana was the god of fertility. And so they began to worship Diana, and they began to say in one voice, in one loud voice, great is Diana of the Ephesians. And they stood and they screamed it for two hours. For two hours they screamed to a false god who never heard a word they said. For two hours. That's kind of like when you're screaming at Walmart for two hours. No one's going to listen to you. When you're saying it's the day before Christmas Eve and I'm here and there's ten people deep in line at each register and you only have three registers open. This is an abomination. You can scream all you want. They're not listening. I know that from experience. In fact, people just look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> I'm moving on. Never mind. But for two hours, they screamed to, the, to this God, Diana, for two hours. Great. Is Diana of the Ephesians. And she never, praise God. He has commanded a blessing on our family. And I dare us, I dare us to open our mouth from the front of this church to the back of this church and declare his greatness for a real true God who actually hears us and answers us louder than what they did for a false God that didn't even know they existed. We serve a living God. We serve an alive God. We serve an answering God. We serve a healing God. Come on, somebody. We serve a providing God. We serve a God who restores, a God who brings hope, a God who brings peace and joy and comfort in this season that we're celebrating. Come on. We serve a God who wants to meet your needs this morning. He hears you. He's listening. He's paying attention today, and he wants to meet your need this morning. Come on. It's more than just a noise. It's the commanded blessing of God. Praise God. I don't know about you, but I need a commanded blessing on my family. I need a commanded blessing on my business. I need a commanded blessing on my endeavors. I need a commanded blessing and anointing on my life. And that happens when we come together and when we dwell together in unity. Still talking about unity. Amen. You know... I put five pounds back on since I lost my 19. I think most of that happened Friday night at Christmas dinner. That's why I'm breathing a little heavier this morning. <laughs> the stuffing has stuffed. <laughs> I'm wrapping this up. The Bible said in Genesis chapter 11, it's a remarkable verse. The Lord said, talking about the people who were building the Tower of Babel. Remember that story? They were worshiping idols. And God said, this people, this people, they are one. And he said, listen, they have one language. And they've, they've got, they're talking the same thing. And they got one vision. And they got a vision to build something. They're talking the same talk. They're saying to each other, we can do this. We can do this. And those people were worshiping demons. And listen to what the Lord said. He said, now nothing will be restrained from them which they can imagine to do. Nothing will be restrained from them which they can imagine to do. And God said, i got to break this up. This ain't good. How many know unity works for the other side too? How many know right now there, there may be more unity on their side than there is on this side? We need to get it together. Come on, somebody. The church, the church and our nation needs to get it together. Because the other side is pretty, pretty unified right now. CBS, no, never mind, never mind. God said, I got to break them up. And you know the story. 
They tore down the tower. He tore down the tower. He messed up their language. He gave them different languages. Wouldn't that have been a funny sight? They're trying to communicate. They've been used to communicating just like we're communicating here this morning. And then all of a sudden, I just start speaking something totally different. And then you're sitting there, and you're like, I don't understand French. It's not French. It's Italian. And I don't understand that. And you turn to your neighbor, you turn to your spouse, and you say, what in the world is he talking about? What's he saying? And they don't understand you because they, they're, they're, they're speaking a total different language now too. Wouldn't that just be a hoot to see? And that's what's happening here. Everybody's talking a different language. Everybody's understanding a different language. God just does something incredible. Now they're not talking the same thing. They're not seeing the same thing. If God said if they keep going together in unity, nothing will be restrained from them, which they can imagine to do. If they keep going together in unity, nothing will be restrained from them, which they can imagine to do. Hmm. Let me say that one more time. If they keep going together in unity, nothing will be restrained from them that they can imagine to do. God's not just talking about the Tower of Babel. He's talking to the church. If they keep going together in unity, nothing will be restrained from them. I will command my blessing on them. And nothing will be restrained them that they can imagine to do. Think about that in your family. Think about that in your marriage. Think about that in your business. Think about that in your own life. Maybe think about how much division do you have. How many people are you just not talking to right now? How many people are you angry with? And the devil's saying, I want you to stay that way. Because if you'll stay that way, I can block this blessing. But God wants to command a blessing on you. And that blessing comes with unity. It will not come without unity. It comes with unity. Blake and Bethany, go ahead and come to the front. How many are thankful we're a part of a unified family here? And I'm going to go a step beyond that. I'm thankful that I'm a part of a unified church in our community. I've never, ever been to a community like Sealing where the church has worked together as good as we do here. We're not competing. It's not about a competition. It's not about how many did you have this week? How many did you have this week? How much did you run? I can tell how many I ran off. (laughs) It's not about that. We work together, and I love that. I love the way our churches pull together and work together and are unified in this this city. But I I got to thinking about something. How many of you have ever been to California and you've seen the huge redwood trees in California up the coast. Just slip your hand up real quick. Leave them up. We want to know who's been affected by California. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> They're watching. Um, now, if you go to California, these redwood trees are huge. They're huge. And they're considered the largest living things on the earth and the tallest trees in the world. Some of them are over 300 feet high and over 2,500 years old. They were around when that song came out, Blake. They yeah. were. <laughs> One would kind of think, well, these trees are so large, they have to have a tremendous root system. I mean, those roots must go all the way to China. Moving on. Reaching down hundreds, thousands of feet into the earth. However, the redwoods actually have a very shallow root system. Well, how do they stay so big and so strong? How do they do that? How do they stand for so long? Although it's a very shallow root system, here's how they do it. They intertwine their roots. And so their roots don't run deep. Their roots actually run run wide and their roots intertwine with one another and they're locked to each other together and so when a storm comes up and the winds blow they may not be run deep but they're run and they're interlocked together and they stand firm and they don't move and it's because they do not stand alone for all the trees support and protect each other and the same is true for the church 
How are we going to stand strong in 2021? Listen, I wish I could tell you what 2021 holds. But the truth is, if we got up and first day of 2020 and said what everything we have gone through in this year, some of y'all be like, dude, you crazy. <laughs> you drunk too much Christmas punch. Right? So I, I, I don't know. I don't know what 2021 is going to hold. I don't know. But I do know this. I know God's already there. I know he's already making a way where there seems to be no way. I do know that. I do know he's for us. He's not against us. I know Jer Jeremiah 29, 11 still stands true even in 2021. That his plans for us are good to prosper us, mm -hmm. not to harm us. Mm -hmm. I do know that. I do know his word is still true. So no matter what this new year throws at us, which I'm believing for the blessing of God, but no matter what it throws at us, how are we going to make it through? We're going to make it through by working together, yeah. by being together, by standing together. And we will not fall apart and will not fall out because we're standing unified as one. Amen. Amen. You guys are absolutely incredible. Through this year, we've had to make some tough decisions. And through this year, we've faced some difficult hardships. We lost our pastor, our best friend. We didn't lose him. We know right where he's at. But there's a void in our life here now. That's enough. But on top of all that, we've had to deal with COVID. We've had to deal with you waiting by your phone on Saturday night and Sunday morning, waiting for a text. Are we having church? Or are we not having church? Checking Facebook. Are we having church? Or are we not having church? Is that preacher ever going to get out of his bed? Come on, somebody. For four days, I didn't. <laughs> We've had, is this event canceled? Is this event on? We've had to take a new look at how we do rib dinners. Inviting everybody in, letting them pick all the sides and all the desserts and however many they want. God bless us, that was amazing. But then we had to go to carry out. And we had to use the Christmas in the country theme. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. <laughs> now you know what I'm talking about. We've had a lot, make a lot of changes. We've had to make a lot of adjustments. And I know pastors who've tried to make those adjustments. They've tried to watch out for their family. On a Wednesday nights, when we make calls about, are we having a Wednesday night because of the weather and because of this, we're not just thinking about our youth and the kids. We've got a team of over 50 people, over 50 people here on Wednesday nights between here and the Grove who are helping out every Wednesday night. And we gotta watch out for their safety too. Many of them drive miles and miles to be here. We got some that drive 40, 50 miles to come to church. We don't take that for granted. And the thing is, through all these changes and through all these things that have happened throughout this year, I, I've talked to other pastors, and when they canceled because of COVID, they said, you know, we got COVID cases in our church. People have rose up and said, why are you doing that? You're showing a lack of faith. And then when they keep going, other people rise up and said, why are you, why are you doing that? You don't care about your people. And I'm saying this, I'm saying I'm so thankful for Elm Grove because you may think that, but you don't post that. <laughs> you may think that, you may talk, to, I don't know, but that's, that's not what's coming out of your mouth. In every decision that we've made, you may be disappointed in some things. Man, I really wish we had church today. Man, I really wish we had youth today. There's only 12 inches of snow on the ground and six inches of ice underneath. We can make it. But through all that, I know us as leaders, we've never heard an ill word. What we've heard is, guys, we support you. Guys, we're, we're, we're behind you. What we've heard is, guys, I'm glad I'm not making those calls. <laughs> but guys, we're behind you. And whatever you think's best, we're gonna support that. That's unity. That's a family working together. And that's a family that through all the hell that's been thrown in 2020, 
That's a family that has stood tall and survived, and not only survived, but thrived in this year. We have a lot of people who aren't here this morning who are watching online. We check on them throughout the week. We love on them. We encourage them, and they're standing tall with us this morning as well. We have a family that's standing together, unified. And I'm encouraging you, if you're looking for a family that's unified, you found it. You found it. There's so much dysfunction in families across our our world. And God's trying to show our families a picture of what he wants his family to be like. And unity has got to be one of the core keys. Amen. Thank you. This morning's message is just to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. I'm trying to look every one of you in the eye and say thank you. Thank you for this year. Thank you for a year that was tough and difficult and we faced it with a lot of challenges and a lot of, a lot of times just praying and seeking God's face and saying, I don't know how many times I prayed this prayer, God, what do I do? God, what do I do? And then God would say, I've surrounded you with people who are wise in that area. I've surrounded you with people who are wise in that situation. I've talked to Michael, I've talked to Lauren, I've talked to Carrie, I've talked to our board, just calling and saying, what, what do we do? What are we supposed to do in this time? Give me wisdom. And they have fed me with wisdom. And together as a unified family, we march forward. Here we are on the last Sunday of December when a lot of churches across our nation are shut down. Here we are, and you guys are still here and still worshiping and still praising and you guys online you're still here you're still praising you're still worshiping you're still with us because we're unified as one we're unified as the church of Jesus Christ he's coming back for a church without spot stain or wrinkle and I believe every person in this congregation is going to be caught up together when we get to go by way of the rapture amen Hey, stand to your feet this morning. This morning with every head bowed and every eye closed, I don't want to leave this moment, leave this opportunity without saying this. First of all, before we can be unified as a church, we have to be unified with God. And that's why we celebrate Christmas, because on Christmas, God gave a way that we might be unified with Him. Where sin tried to wreck us and defeat us, God sent his son to give us victory. And there's only one way to be unified with God. There's only one name, the Bible says. I know there's a lot of different avenues out there, but according to his word, there's only one way that gets us in unity with him. And that's the name of Jesus Christ. And that's the relationship with him. So if you're here this morning, you would say, Pastor Jared, there's... There's just a tugging in my heart right now, and I know I need to be unified with God. I know in my heart I'm not right. Maybe you once knew him, but you've, you've ran away from him. You're not living where you should live. Maybe you've never made that commitment. Maybe you need to rededicate your life, or maybe you need to dedicate your life for the very first time. Well, this morning, that's why we're here, because God wants to bring unity between you and him through his son, Jesus. If that's you, on the count of three, we just slip your hand up. Just slip it up and right back down. We'll slip it up high so we can see it. We're not going to call you out. We're not going to embarrass you. I just want to lead you in a prayer this morning. If that's you, will you slip your hand up? One, two, three. Anybody, anywhere? Yes, thank you, sir. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Awesome. Awesome. I want to be in unity with Jesus. I want to be unified with God today. Anybody else? Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask you this morning, everyone in this place, if you would, to pray this prayer with me. There is two of you that raise your hand. And I just want to ask you, you too, man, let these be words that flow from your heart, not just from our lips and from our mouth. And it's not about getting the words right, it's about getting your heart right. And this morning, God sees your desire to get your heart right, to get in unity with Him. So we're believing right now God's changing your destination. God's changing your life. God's bringing his blessing into your life. He can't command a blessing upon your life until you're in unity with him. 
And now you are about to be in unity with him, so there's a blessing coming your way. And man, a big part of that blessing is salvation for eternity, eternal life through his son Jesus. Everyone in this place, come on, pray this prayer with me. Say, dear Lord, I come to you today in need of a savior. I cannot save myself. So today, I give my heart to you. Take my life and use it for your glory. I repent of my sin. I turn away from it and I chase after you. God, thank you for saving my soul, for giving me hope and giving me life eternal. I thank you for your son, Jesus. I believe he is the son of God. And today, I accept his sacrifice into my life. I thank you for eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Come on, church family, get in unity, and let's give them a warm hand clap of appreciation this morning. Amen. Isn't God good? Come on. Come on, let's do it one more time. Let's lift up the noise in this place. Let's praise him. For two hours, they said, great is Diana. Great is Diana. Come on, for two minutes, let's say, great is the King of Kings. And great is the Lord of Lords. And great is the host of all hosts. Great is the one who gave us life, who gave us hope, who gave us freedom, who shed his blood. Come on, great is he. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad that you're in unity with him and with one another this morning? Now, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not going to tell you to turn around and hug somebody, love them. I, that's, that's between you and the Lord. But I, before you leave, I want you to look, at least look someone square in the eyes and tell them, man, I'm glad I'm, I'm united with you because we got some good things coming in 2021. Amen. And we all want to be part of it. God bless you guys this morning. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for coming out to the country. 2020, we've learned a lot of stuff, haven't we? We're going to take those lessons into 2021. And we're going to see God do some amazing things in our life. God bless you guys. Make it a great, great Sunday. Enjoy it. Love on one another in a CDC-friendly way.